Hello and welcome to an episode of Embrace Your Indoor Space. Uh, we're changing the format up slightly because the weather's getting worse, the days are getting shorter and we wanted to get a larger studio space for some time now. I had the opportunity to take hold of this barn. It was previously used by a band. We've got a lot of tidying and clearing up to do. First of all, we've got to rip out all this. We need to reinstate the electrics. We've got to pretty up some of the walls and insulate the roof line. This will be the main studio space. So we're going to put the new lighting rigs up here. We've got some pods. We're going to decorate that back wall. The flooring's going to be sanded. Whatever this is, is going to disappear. I might retain this, however. Merry Christmas, everyone, by Shaking Stevens. Merry Christmas, everyone. So a little bit of creativity, a little bit of ingenuity, and obviously some Greenworks tools. We're hoping to transform this sorry, sad looking space into a studio to be proud of. So let's get to work. Back in full out transition into a one and a half there. So welcome to day two. We cleared out a load of junk. So why on earth am I bringing in a whole load of new junk? Well, we're gonna be using these scaffolding boards to create some nice aesthetic backdrops here, some shelves. They've obviously been on site. They're covered in mortar. They're covered in all sorts of materials. You need to let them dry out before you can start sanding them down. If you rip off the top, check down the main core of the timber. Let them dry out in a garage. You can use an oscillating multi-tool or a sander, but I generally find that using the angle grinder gives you a bit more power and potency. Obviously, make sure you wear a respirator mask and goggles whilst you're doing so, and keep an eye out because a lot of the time you'll find they have the stray nail or spike sticking into it. Case in point, we've got mortar and a nail sticking out, so that needs to be removed. You can also see how dark that timber is as well. So that moisture has to go before you can start treating it. Thereafter, they can be used for decking, they can be used for shelving, they can be used for cladding, all sorts of construction. In this case, we're gonna build some tables and some shelves. Rustic is apparently very charming, but this is far from charming. Snots of expander foam all down the wall. We've got bits of timber jutting out. We've got eaves covered in spiders' webs, bubble wrap just stuffed in to stop the breeze. So we need to get rid of that. We need to clad that all up at the top. We need to cut those snots off using the oscillating multi-tool. Shelves and the backdrop, we're going to be using the circular saw, the jigsaw. And in fact, actually illuminating this grotty space at the moment, the grotty grotto, that's what we can call it for the meantime, is our 24 volt side light, which is really useful to have actually, because we don't have free access to power. So we're gonna put some new lighting in here. That's all gonna be on a remote control system, but less talking, let's get busy. Welcome to, I think day four, it's not really four days because we've been doing other bits in between. Just trying to do this in the evenings as much as I can. We're starting to get a bit of a homey effect to the point actually, right? I don't want to go home in the evenings. I'm actually really enjoying spending some time up here. I'm trying to do as much as I can with as little as I can. I know a lot of you are going to go, well, you've got all the tools, so it's easy. Yes, they really do make a massive difference. And every single one of them are pretty much used on some of the upcycle materials that I've been able to beg, steal and borrow. Some of which I also had hanging around at the yard as well. What's that over in that field there? Someone's left a perfectly good, brand new oil radiator in the middle of that field. It's amazing. It's amazing what you can find when you're looking for it. It's warm as well. So what have we done? Firstly, we had to PVA wash the walls, the glue they used at school. A little bit of water to create a slurry, paint that on the walls and it essentially glues all of the dust onto the brickwork. It also acts as a modest damp proof barrier as well. So if you've got cellars which are quite dusty, if you've got old brickwork that you've exposed and you want to retain that look, then I'd advocate that you do a PVA slurry and wash. We've painted some of the shrubs which are on the wall black. Massive fan of painting things black, fence lines that accentuates the green. In this case, it's really accentuating the brickwork. We've used the scaffold boards, really coming to their own as shelves, really easy to do. You'll cut them into size using the circular saw or the oscillating multi-tool to sand those down. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this barn used to belong to a band who have since left and it paid me to throw things out, especially seeing as I play the drums myself. 
And I came across this drum pedal, and I thought, you know what, I could do with one of those. It's gonna really come in handy. And it did, as a light. We've actually embellished the environment with light. That has been the biggest change in this room. I can't stress the importance of light, both indoors and outdoors. It brings atmosphere to an environment, especially in the outdoors as well. If you've got large trees, standalone trees that you want to kind of ignite interest onto, especially during the dormant period, especially during that winter period, uplighting trees to give a wonderful silhouette, create structure and focus in your garden using lighting, but also conversely indoors as well. And it could be something as humble as an adhesive LED strip, just to give a throw of light on the back of the wall. And then I've installed some remote control lighting so we can have the lights come on and off on demand. I've tried to do what I can with the materials that we've got and the materials that I've found. So we've used OSB to create some desks. We use scaffolding boards to create some pods and some shelves. So we've actually come across some rebar. My hair's such a mesh. <laughs> <laughs> so we used that to create translucent partition between this part of the studio and the nice office space. So we added a pallet coffee table, probably one of the easiest upcycled projects you could take on at home. You don't really need many power tools for this. A nice dry pallet, which I managed to find in the yard. I've attached some plywood to the underside, which I had lying around. That's gonna create that coffee table-esque structure with the shelving in the middle. Some hairpin legs, which I bought offline, and I've attached those using the impact driver. Even adding a few lights would also create a bit of interest, but in this case, I've put my lights elsewhere. Now, I'm really pleased the way this turned out, actually. I think that combination of that red brick wall, fairy lights is a real nice touch, especially at low light. Concrete mesh, which I had lying around after a previous project, just projected in front of it, really contrasts. I love that visual juxtaposition. It's gonna look even better when we get to replicate it in a garden next year. So we had some gabions left over from a previous project, completely impractical for log storage because it takes about 15 minutes to unthread them. But as a standalone showpiece, I think it actually looks quite stylish. We found a snooker table in here and it seems sacrilege to get rid of that. We fitted it the perfect height for a worktop, whacked some plywood on the top and go from work time to play time in no time. And there's nothing I enjoy more than playing with my balls. It doesn't sound like I've done any of the work. It sounds like the tools have done the work. Yes, admittedly, they really have helped, but the right tool for the right task really does make a massive difference, especially if you're a DIYer as well and you want to get jobs done quickly and effectively. It's all about having the right tool. It makes such a massive difference to the outcome. If you want to find out any more about the tools that I've been using to tackle some of the tasks that I'm midway through, then you can always check the link out at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, I'd love to hear your comments and feedbacks down below.